Day one brought us an upset, a walk off in extras, a seventh inning comeback, and a day full of battles between these Big 12 teams. Lots of great softball, and we expect much of the same here today, starting with this fifth place game between Iowa State and Baylor. Alongside the former Oklahoma Sooner, DJ Sanchez, I'm Jessica Cootie, and this matchup featuring the two third place teams from their respective pools. The Bears and Cyclones both going 0-2 yesterday, but Iowa State is a couple of plays, a couple of pitches away from potentially being in the championship game against Oklahoma. And Baylor head coach Glenn Moore felt like his team did not do themselves any favors yesterday, and they need a much better performance here this afternoon. DJ, how much are you looking at this game being a must win really for both teams? It is, and knowing that this is the fifth game, fifth place game of the championship, this is a much bigger game for both of these teams, especially the way that yesterday unfolded for Iowa State. They were in two very close games with Texas and Oklahoma State and came up a little bit short. Baylor not playing their best softball yesterday. So both of these teams are walking in here today feeling as if this might be the game that can punch their ticket to a postseason regional. Baylor will be the home team and Glenn Moore calling on his senior once again Gia Rodoni. She uh, took the loss yesterday in game one six and a third ten hits eight runs two home runs given up to Texas Tech 11 strikeouts but she's a senior she's been doing this for six years. She knows what she's doing. She knows how to win in the postseason, despite the uncharacteristic performance yesterday. Absolutely. And she battles. Nothing phases her. Not her best performance yesterday, but there were some good things. She had a ton of strikeouts yesterday, but the long ball really came back to bite her in the end. And here we are underway. This is Carly Spellhog leading things off for Iowa State. Has let off every single game for the Cyclones this season. And she's really kind of been the table setter for this team and setting up things for the best hitter in Iowa State Absolutely. program Absolutely, you history. took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. So Sammy Williams right behind her. I'm excited to get to really watch uh, Sammy Williams play. She's been fun to watch over these last few years. Continues to climb up the record books. We're gonna be talking a lot about that throughout the day, but Spellhagen has been a nightmare on the base pass as she gets on right away with a leadoff single here for Iowa State. Good start for Iowa State, and with Spellhog and everything that she can do, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't maybe see a little bit of aggressive base running here to start this game. So here she is, Sammy Williams, not only the best hitter in Iowa State program history, one of the best hitters in all of college softball all over the record books in Iowa State and Big 12 and NCAA. And Yesterday, a couple more records added to the list. She uh, set the single season record for uh, RBIs in a season with 54 RBIs. She was four for four with two home runs in that game against Oklahoma State. And she is one hit away from becoming the all time hits leader in Big 12 history. It has really been awesome to watch. And I I'm sad to see her go. I know Iowa State is sad to see her go. I think every other coach in the Big 12 is going to be really excited when they don't have to face her anymore. <laughs> um, but what an unbelievable career she has had, and I'm excited to see what happens today. There is a called strike two. One and two here. And here, look at those numbers. Just crazy. And again, drafted as well this past week. Eighth in the draft, and you see all those hits, and Grounds that one up the middle. Iowa State looking to turn two, not in time, but they'll get the leadoff runner. Spellhog at second. So that will not count, right? Nope, so fielder's choice. So a couple other opportunities as this game goes on for Sammy Williams. We saw Iowa State yesterday trying to use the short game. We saw Sammy Williams square around. Not quite getting that on the sweet spot where she wanted, just missed it. And here is Michaela Ramos. She's not having a bad season herself, right? Uh, 364, 52 RBI. So that originally was the program record for Iowa State. So she tied it, but just so happens that her teammate is Sammy Williams, who has hit 54. That's always a good problem to have. You've got one record being set and then someone coming right behind her and resetting that record in the same, same lineup, same season. Pops that one up to Langford. 
for out number two. Good response here by Radoni giving up the leadoff single to start the game. Getting two quick outs through the heart of the Cyclone lineup. So now here is Ochoa for Iowa State in four hole. She was one for three in both games yesterday. Had some amazing defensive plays though. Yes, she did. Seeing that robbed home run that really <laughs> <laughs> kept Iowa State in a position to win a game against Oklahoma State yesterday evening. Freshman out of California. Jamie Pinkerton recruits a lot out there in California. He does, and you know, with what Coach Pinkerton has done here at Iowa State in, in really, truly kind of a short amount of time, I mean, Iowa State reached their highest RPI ranking in program history this season. And, you know, the recruiting, the culture that this team has, I think a lot of that can be attributed to Coach Pinkerton and kind of that family atmosphere and culture that he's brought to Ames. His fourth season. Turned things around in a hurry. First winning season since 1995, back in 2019. That one uh, fouled out of play. Two and two here with two outs for Ochoa. Rodoni has thrown nearly every inning for Baylor, not just this season, but in this Big 12 championship here. Again, just a gutsy super senior. Another foul ball here as Ochoa continues to battle. This was a fun series between these two teams when they met earlier in Big 12 Conference play. Baylor took the series 2-1, but it was Sammy Williams that gave Iowa State the win in game two with a walk-off home run, and Rodoni actually pitched the two games that Baylor won, and swing and a miss. For, for Baylor will be Lou Gilbert, Emily Hott, second baseman Goose McLawn, Leah Benford, Taylor Ellis, Josie Bauer, Zadie Lavalle and Sydney Cuyas. I'm sorry. Wow, I just messed up her name big time. Cuyasos, there we go. And Alyssa Avalos. And in the circle for Iowa State. Interesting here, as this is Carly Charles and her first appearance in the Big 12 championship, but she also was the winning pitcher, or got the start in the game that Iowa State won against Baylor in this three game series in regular season play. Yeah, Charles has, she's had a good season, you know, coming out 11 and eight. Um, I think the thing for Charles that has been a little bit of an Achilles heel is keeping the ball in the yard at times. She's given up 23 home runs this season, but she had a lot of success against Baylor earlier in the season in that conference matchup. So I like the nod, giving the nod to Charles and saying, hey, do it again. Let's see if we can't pull this out like we did earlier in the season. Gilbert was actually moved into the leadoff spot right before this series against Iowa State. And boy, she has been hot in this leadoff spot. She has, and it has been something. Baylor has faced so much adversity this season between COVID and injuries and things that are just absolutely out of their control. There's been a lot of shakeup in this offensive lineup, and Lou Gilbert has really taken on that leadoff spot and has given some consistency to this Baylor lineup offensively. So she leads the team in batting average, the sophomore out of Kansas City, and uh, she's used to that. She set the uh, high school career single season batting average record, hitting 559 at Staley High School. Oh, wow. For her career. That's, I'd say that's okay. That's pretty good, right? There's some people that can't hit 559 off a tee, <laughs> I would assume, so. <laughs> And there have been a lot of good ball players come out of the Kansas City area over the years. So that's saying a lot. There's good softball being played in that area. Three, two count here in Gilbert with a leadoff walk for Baylor. Gilbert finding a way on and again, making Charles. Charles has not walked many batters this season. 
only walking 29 batters in 117 innings. So kind of a rare opportunity here for Baylor getting the leadoff walk here to start the game. Charles, 11 and 8, 26 appearances, 16 starts. And uh, her last appearance came against Kansas. The game three when Iowa State was able to get the sweep over Kansas. Complete game. Nine hits, four runs. Just two walks in that entire game. Four strikeouts, 12 to four win. It was a big one because it was the first time that Iowa State was able to sweep Kansas in Lawrence since 1989. First series win, actually, not even just a sweep, but first uh, series win in Lawrence since 1989. You know, there have been a lot of records and firsts and things that haven't happened in decades going through this Iowa State program this season. So, you know, I think any team in the Big 12, the weekend that Iowa State came up, great read there by Gilbert, reading the ball in the dirt, taking the bag. Baylor showing aggressive base running, just like always. And just look at it. Immediately, the steal was on, but Gilbert, no way on the off-speed pitch once it got into the dirt. So 2-1 count here for Emily Hot, the freshman coming back home, and she hits this one deep off the wall. And here comes Gilbert to score as Baylor takes the one nothing lead, a stand-up RBI double. For the hometown kid, Emily Hot coming in hot to lead things off here for Baylor to get them on the board first. One nothing here in the bottom of the first. It's good to see for Baylor something they really struggled with yesterday that I think sort of attributed to those losses was not taking advantage of runners in scoring position. Hot's not going to let it happen today. Taking the double into the left center field gap. Great way to start the game for Baylor. So. Hot on second, no outs. Got to think Glenn Moore likes to start much better than what he saw from his teams yesterday. No question. And, you know, Baylor is a good softball team, but they were a little bit sloppy yesterday, uh, making some mental mistakes. We saw Baylor trying to get some things rolling by using the short game, having a really hard time getting the sacrifice bunt down, you know, and kind of running themselves out of some innings. They were their, they were their own worst enemy yesterday. And this is the first baseman, Goose McGuan. You uh, watch Big 12 softball, you know this name well. <laughs> she has had quite a career in a Baylor uniform over the past few years. No one will forget her freshman season when she hit that home run, the seventh, Baylor down two in the Tucson Super Regional, got Baylor back to the World Series. Lays down the bunt here, sacrifice, as Hot moves over to third. So here is a look at the Cyclones out in the field. Ramos behind the plate. Spellhog over at first, Simpson at second. There's Williams at shortstop. We got Ramos, the sister, Skyler out in left. Gosi out in short, and Ochoa, we mentioned her plays over there in right field yesterday. And Shaben at third as well. They've had a kind of they haven't mixed up their lineup much this season not defensively um it has been something you know i think if it's not broke don't fix it you right. know iowa state's had a great season and again i think a lot of that is they've been able to be consistent in the lineup so at the end of the day every year is different and you know there are a lot of talented young players sitting on that iowa state bench right now so i think the future is bright for iowa state this is Aaliyah Benford, freshman shortstop. 2-1 count here, one out. Hot over there on third. Wonder if she's got a lot of family in the stands, being from Edmond, Deer Creek High School. I would assume so, and she hit a home run yesterday that couldn't have landed too far <laughs> from Deer Creek. <laughs> so she has had a good Big 12 championship so far. Benford 0 for 3 against Tech. 1 for 3 against OU. Two strikeouts. Good opportunity here for Benford. Struggled a little bit yesterday with runners in scoring position. 
And I love seeing the confidence that Coach Glenn Moore has. You take a hitter like Goose McLawn and sacrifice her to give Benford the opportunity here. She's 28 RBIs on the season. Swing and a miss there. She'll sit down as out number two. It's Charles with her first strikeout. What a pitch here. Just taking the curveball and painting the outside corner. Here it is. Welcome back to the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. How about a little defense from Sammy Williams, a shortstop? What a throw. What a play. Sammy Williams gets so much credit for what she does offensively, as she should. But man, what a tremendous shortstop as well. Saving the run. What a great play in the 5-6 hole. She can do it all. Here is Kaylee Gosey for Iowa State. Freshman, another one of those out of California. 267 batting average. Just two for four against OSU. Actually hit the an RBI single. Made it six to four in the bottom of the seventh as Iowa State was trying to get back in it. Boy, they had that thing won, you thought, going into the seventh. And then um, Oklahoma State comes back, takes the lead. And then Iowa State fights until the very end. They did. And I look back at Iowa State's day yesterday, and it, it just felt like it was this fighting and clawing all day long. You know, they had a tight game with Texas going into the seventh inning and then saw that game slip away. And then here comes Iowa State in the end, putting a couple runs on the board, trying to fight back. Oklahoma State yesterday walking into the end of that game going, Iowa State's gonna, gonna win this game. And it just did not end up that way. But we have seen a lot of fight from this team this weekend in particular. And, you know, I, today's not gonna be any different. I think Baylor putting a run on the board is going to fire up this Iowa State team. Do you, I mean, do you build some confidence maybe in, in how you played for six innings really against a top 10 team in the country or is it a little bit heartbreaking? I'd say a little bit of both. And, you know, I think this is an Iowa State team that is expecting to go out and not just compete with those teams, but beat those teams. As Gosey pops up out to left field. Gilbert is out number one. Here is Alicia Ranches. So Ranches, foul tip there. And coming into this tournament, you thought that Oklahoma or that the Big 12 was going to get probably five teams looking pretty solid going into it. Of course, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas, and then uh, Baylor, Iowa State. But, you know, Glenn Moore, we, we talked about it off the top. He was uh, not very happy. He thought that they had put themselves in a pretty good position, but now felt like coming into today that, you know, they've, they've uh, kind of put it in the committee's hands and they really need to have a better performance today. They do, and Iowa State and Baylor both. It's a little bit of an infield pop up there. Gloved but for the second out. But Iowa State and Baylor both sitting decent in the RPI, mid 30s, both of them. They're both very similar where they are in the RPI. Um, again, very similar with where they finished in conference play. But the showing that both of these teams had yesterday, even though Iowa State played well, um, but coming in with two losses, I think now both of these teams are feeling like they are bubble teams of, are we going to make it in or not? And I have a feeling that both Coach Pinkerton and Glenn Moore are going to be watching what's happening in these other conference championships going on. Because if someone who is unexpectedly comes up and wins some of these championships, then we're taking spots away from some of these bubble teams. So it could get interesting for Baylor and Iowa State. One one count here for Casey Simpson, junior second baseman. Pop up. And that is going to be Benford coming in to call that one off. So one, two, three inning for Gia Radoni. 
We head to the bottom of the second. You're watching the Phillips 66 Big 12 Softball Championship. Four nothing over Iowa State the last time they met in the Big 12 tournament in 2017. Hey, we've seen some years of Iowa State, I mean, truly struggling. And this is a different Iowa State team. And we've seen that time and time again throughout the season. So a lot of game left. Again, I'm going to be curious to see Iowa State and that fight that we've seen all weekend as this game continues. Carly Charles in the circle for Iowa State. And here up for Baylor in the second is Bauer. Grounder over to second. Out number one. So I will bring up Zadie Lavalli. Next at the plate for the Bears. Catcher number 99, Zadie Lavalli. The Valley, another Oklahoma kid. The Chucked, Oklahoma, with Carl Albert High School. 212 batting average, two home runs, 19 RBIs. 0 for 1, 0 for 1 in both games yesterday as she pops this one up, finds the gap out there in shallow right to get a lead up or to get on base here for Baylor with one out. Finding a way to get it done, not a bad pitch by Carly Charles, running it in on LaValle's hands, and she just did enough. You even see her there get jammed, but just did enough to power it out and find a little bit of grass. Here's Sydney Cuyasos, true freshman, Georgetown, Texas grounder. Over to third, double play. Turn is not in time. They get the lead runner. What a play there. What a snag. Off the line by Logan Shaven. And the fact that she came up and knew the speed that she had at first base to get the lead runner keeping Baylor out of scoring position. Just with the backhand play and again, the quick knowing how fast our runners are at first. Great play by Shaven all the way around. And this is the nine hole hitter, Alyssa Avalos. She did not register in a bat yesterday. 138 batting average. Pops this one up to Williams. And another quick one, two, three inning. We're moving right along here in this fifth place game between Iowa State and Baylor. One nothing as we head to the third here at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Softball Championship. Baylor leading Iowa State one nothing here at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. And again, we'll talk about it at length here really all day. Talking about as Selection Sunday comes up tomorrow. Here's a look at what the committee is going to be looking at. And we've talked a lot about RPI, but not quite as important this year as we've seen in years past. Yeah, and you know, I think the one thing for both of these teams that is sitting in the back of their mind is that key wins and losses and that end of season performance. Both Baylor and Iowa State yesterday had the opportunity to take on top 10 teams. Both walked away with, with losses in which they both could have couple things fall their way, take advantage of a couple couple opportunities, they get that win over Oklahoma State or Texas. Um, instead, both teams are walking in today 0-2. So talking about the importance of this game and walking away with a win could be the difference maker in whose name pops up in that selection show tomorrow. Logan Shaven to lead things off here for Iowa State, coming off quite the defensive play there. In the bottom half of the second. Senior out of Portsmouth, Iowa. Just a little outside there. Just a bit. And Radoni, she's looked good so far. Um, you know, kind of scattering that single to start the game. And then she has been lights out ever since. You know, going into this, Patty Gasso is talking about how much respect she has for Radoni as a shot. Right up the middle there from Shaben to lead things off with a single for Iowa State. Get their leadoff hitter on. 
We're just talking about the respect that Coach Gasso has for Rodoni. She's battled through so many injuries, but to continue to fight and come back and be someone that Glenn Moore can call on so often. Yeah, and you know, this has been such an interesting year for a lot of these players who, a year ago, their career as a senior was supposed to be over, and then you have someone like Rodoni. Iowa State leads down the sacrifice bunt. Shaven moves over to second. But a player like, go ahead, sorry. A player like Rodoni who, who has really struggled with injury. Uh, I mean, she just has, she didn't have to come back to Baylor this year. You know, and we kind of see her here making this play, making it look easy on the sacrifice bunt. But she didn't have to come back. And she made the decision to do so, and she's really carried this Baylor pitching staff. Back to the top of the order and swinging at first pitch is Spellhog. It is Gilbert that comes in. Route number two. And here is Sammy Williams. Again, it seems like every at bat for her this season, this entire season, has been a potential record on the line. She uh, continues to chase them. And they're going to walk her here. Good move? I think so. I don't blame them. Now, your job doesn't get much easier with Ramos on deck. But knowing what Sammy Williams has done in her all season, and also the type of day she had yesterday, she's seen the ball well. Don't let the best player in the lineup beat you. And offensively, that is exactly what Sammy Williams is. Really, Rodoni doesn't throw too many or put too many people on with walks. She doesn't. So here is Williams taking first base with two outs. The records will have to wait, says Baylor, until uh, her next at bat. So here's Michaela Ramos, who um, also not an easy hitter to pitch to. No, Ramos has, has done a good job. I mean, she's, she's second behind Sammy Williams with 52 RBIs. So job doesn't get much easier. But again, don't let the best player beat you. Spouse this way. Look right there is the first baseman. McLon comes in to uh, make the catch right at the fence. We couldn't see it from our view, but how about the defensive play once again for Baylor to get out of the inning? We head to the bottom of the third here at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championships. Several years, it's a fun, fun event. It is. It's fun, and it's it gives you that first, you know, that first feeling and that first taste of postseason. You know, you have all those different segments of the year, and Big 12 Championship always is postseason is here. It's time, so it's always fun. Back to the top of the order for Baylor. It's Gilbert. She uh, led things off with a single, her first at bat. How much of an advantage is it for these teams? Of course, Oklahoma gets to the Women's College World Series year in and year out, but Oklahoma State made it last year, and you know, you've had teams, Baylor, of course, made it in 2018. How much of an advantage is it for these Big 12 teams to get experience on this field? Yeah, you know, for some teams, when they make it to the College World Series, it's their first experience ever even stepping in this complex. And, you know, for the Big 12 being able to host the championship here at the Hall of Fame, it, I mean, I think it does give an advantage. You've been here, you're not stepping on that field for the first time um, on national television for the Women's College World Series. So it kind of gives you, I've been here before, and gives a little bit more comfortability than maybe I think some of the other teams who don't have that opportunity. Full count here for Gilbert. Bottom of the third, Baylor leading Iowa State 1 0. Boy, these pitchers have really uh, settled in and been battling. They have, and you know, we've seen Baylor get in striking distance. Charles kind of work her way out of it after giving up the run. She's really settled down. And Radoni, same thing. We've seen Iowa State get some runners in scoring position, and Radoni just finding a way to work around it. So I think both teams have had their opportunities, still a lot of game left, but these pitchers so far have kind of held their own. 
So I think we uh, had some spectacular defense in the uh, in the stands. <laughs> so you, you heard the cheers, and uh, we couldn't see the perspective here, but this guy somehow comes oh, up man. with a snag way up in the stands. We're seeing defense all over the place today. No glove. Yeah. Get him a jersey. <laughs> see, uh, Iowa State, or it looked like he was wearing red. I don't know which team. I would assume that's Iowa State if he's at this field. Could be Oklahoma. There is a strikeout for Charles. Gilbert's going to sit down. That's a huge out for Carly Charles. Lou Gilbert leading off the inning. Kind of the table setter for this Baylor program and just freezing her. What a great pitch on the outside corner. And Gilbert knew it. But see Charles changing speeds here just a hair and painting that outside corner. Here's really hot. Quick out there. So two quick outs here for Charles. As McLawn now back up to the plate for her second appearance. Sacrifice bunt, first time up, first inning. Pop up, just out of play. Baylor's coming out aggressive, you know, I think. Charles obviously with the strikeout early, but coming out aggressive, swinging at first pitches. Nice hustle, young man there. Getting the ball back quickly. They used to hand out snow cones when you'd bring back a foul ball, so I don't know if that's still a thing. They gotta bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> 0-2 here, Blanc, two outs. Charles looking to make it another quick inning here. And Glon can get it, continues to battle, fouled out of play. spot there by Charles. She's doing a good job. We haven't seen her work the ladder up and down much. She's really working in and out. She's been able to kind of keep these Baylor hitters off balance so far doing that. But I like the location, especially 0-2, working out off the plate, changing the eyes of McGlon a little bit. And outside 2-2. Goose McLawn. She goes by her nickname because um, the bedtime story her parents used to read her. That's a shot, but out of play. This story cracks me up every time I hear it. I mean, that, that nickname for all those years just sticking like it has. Fans love it. Down in Waco. She's sixth in program history with 34 career home runs. She's also moving up the uh, career record books. Hasn't hit ha as many home runs this season as uh, she did in freshman year, but. Yeah, she's really had a great career and you always think back to, and you already mentioned this earlier, Jessica, the the Super Regional in Tucson. Yeah. And, you know, as many wonderful things as she has done in her career since then, there have been plenty of them. I think that, to me and people who maybe don't watch every single Baylor game, is something that just absolutely stands out. You know, every sport, every program has those plays, those iconic plays that go down in history. And not many people can say that they have one of those, and she does. That will forever live in history, in Baylor softball history. Without a doubt, and just watching the celebration and seeing Baylor going back to the Women's College World Series in such dramatic fashion and being done by a freshman. It was so cool. I mean, you can't write it up better than that. Two 
2-2 count. She continues uh, to battle here. And swing and a miss for out number three and strikeout number three for Carly Charles. We head to the fourth inning. You're watching the Phillips 66 Big 12 Softball Champion. It remains 1-0 as we've got a bit of a pitcher's duel going in here, going on here in this uh, fifth place game between Iowa State and Baylor. And we talked about Gia Rodoni off the top about her uh, tough outing yesterday against Texas Tech. As a pitcher yourself, got to love the way she has responded and bounced back today. And you got to think she wanted the ball, right, to get a second chance at it. Absolutely. And that's just the type of player that Rodoni is. Again, not her best outings yesterday. Um, some good things, but coming into today, I mean, she has been solid, working out of jams and throwing good pitches. The thing that came back to bite her and has kind of been the Achilles for her this season is just missing pitches. We haven't seen that much from her today, doing a good job of hitting spots. Right back to Rodoni goes Uchua for out number one. It is a battled as she's been, as uh, beat up as she's been throughout her career, she had talked about how she feels pretty fresh, that Lynn Moore's been pretty um, smart and conservative with how he's used her. And um, that's a big thing going into the postseason, right? How you line up these pitchers in these matchups. It is, and that's why, I mean, I think you see it back, I'm gonna say back in the day, like it was a really long <laughs> time ago, but a lot, of, a lot of these teams, you always used to hear the, they have one pitcher who is their their ace, and that is who's throwing most of the innings. And you used to hear this, and I, I truly believe it's a myth. You know, pitchers, softball pitchers can throw a million innings because it's a natural motion. That's not really a, the case. And I think we've seen it as the game has evolved here with these teams having staffs. And if you watch the teams who go deep into postseason and make it to the Women's College World Series, those are teams that have pitching staffs. They aren't just relying on one arm. One and two count here. For Gosey. And it pops up to the second baseman. Hot. Two quick outs. These pitchers are working it very quickly here today. They are. This game is moving. We're seeing aggressiveness at the plates. And Radoni, we haven't seen her. Her bread and butter is that off-speed pitch. Her changeup is one of the best in the country. And she's starting to kind of pull it out of her pocket now and keep these Iowa State hitters from being able to settle in on one speed as we see her throw the change up there again. Sanchez back up. Pop out. Her first at bat. You uh, like where the uh, strike zone is for these umps this weekend? Do pitchers ever like the strike I mean, zone? Yeah, that was a really dumb question. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. No, I think it looks good. Um, you know, I have seen at times it get a little extended as games have gone on, but these umpires are doing a great job. Consistent, and that's all you can ask for. If it's consistent one way or the other, then at least you know what you're looking for. So they've done a tremendous job so far. 2-1 count here to Ranchez. Shot out to, what a catch by the center fielder, Avalos. Getting the start today and coming up with a diving catch for out number three. And now we head to the bottom of the fourth. It is still one nothing Baylor here at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Softball Championship. City, June 3rd through the 9th. 
Benford up for Baylor. Do you expect both um, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, how many teams to get to host regionals? You know, I think with the showing that Oklahoma has had consistently throughout the season, I would be I would be thoroughly shocked if Oklahoma does not earn a national seed um, hosting a regionally and a super. I really think Oklahoma State and even Texas are in the talk or in that mix. So, you know, I think today's game with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State is going to be very telling for OSU in what it looks like for them in gaining that national seed. So it could happen. Deep shot out to left center. And that is out of here. See ya. Benford. Oh, she caught it. I couldn't see it, so I was looking at the wrong screen. You told me not to look at that screen, so I was looking <laughs> at the wrong screen. And uh, look at this play. Another great defensive play is uh, that is Gosey getting the catch right at the fence. I'm starting to think Iowa State works on this at practice because they just make this look simple with the Going back, finding the wall, waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, yeah, I'm going to steal your home run. We saw him do it yesterday in a volley, um, yesterday in their game against Oklahoma State. Second robbed home run in this championship so far for Iowa State. Seen some great defense being played. You know, we talked about could we see the potential for lots of runs scored? And uh, so far, it's been about the pitching and defense. Another pop up there. And that is dropped. We had some miscommunication going on between Gosey and second baseman, so. And that's tough. Simpson, Iowa State second baseman was camped underneath that ball. And, you know, kind of the way this play should work is your infielder, your middle infielders are going back. They're taking the call early and your outfielders are the late call. So as soon as Simpson was camped under the ball, Gosey and should have kind of bailed out a little bit, or if Gosey made that late call, Simpson should be bailing out. So a little bit of miscommunication there. Good base running by Jesse ba or excuse me, by Taylor Ellis winding up on second base and not just assuming that that was a give me out. So one quick mistake there has a runner in scoring position for Baylor. So Ellis on second here is Bauer now up. He grounded out to Spellhog with the is back when she made the excellent play over at third. Grounder. pop up Ramos comes in to make the play on that one I've seen a lot of balls up in the air for Baylor and it's just kind of showing I mean Charles has these Baylor hitters off balance we're not seeing hard hit ground balls for outs we're seeing you know pretty routine pop-ups for the most part outside of the stolen home run by Benford but all of these other outs have been relatively weak pop flies. So two outs. The Valley now up. She reached base back in the second. Big opportunity for Baylor. And again, I think this was something that was an issue for Baylor yesterday, taking advantage of mistakes and taking advantage of runners in scoring position. They left a ton of runners on base yesterday in both of their games. And in a tight game like this, the game's starting to get a little bit deeper, getting a little bit later. So these opportunities are gonna be what are this deciding factor and who comes out on top. One, two count. For the Valley. One for one on the day. Two outs, Skin Ellis on second. And got her. 
Another strikeout for Carly and Charles. Make it four. Has been dealing through four. Just two hits allowed for Gio Rodoni. Two hits allowed for Carly Charles. So Iowa State looking to get things going here. As Simpson back up for the Cyclones. Casey Simpson with a pop up to short. 0 for 1 here today. Swing and a miss there. Or strike two. Radoni looks good. Again, kind of getting, she's looked good all game, but you can see her even getting more comfortable opening up the count to Simpson with the change up and then coming high and hard with the rise ball. to Benford for the out. You know, Baylor defensively second in fielding percentage behind Oklahoma. Yeah, they've been really solid. And, you know, I think that that has, has attributed to some of their success um, throughout the season. And great job here as Benford just makes it look easy. She plays it right, doesn't try to go for the catch and just plays the long hop. But you know, OU has one of the best defenses in the entire country, if not the best. So, you know, being right behind them, we've seen a lot of good defensive plays throughout both this championship. Teams, really. Yeah, from both teams. This has been a very well played defensive game. One ball, one strike. Shaven back up. One for one. It's a grounder out of play. How much as a pitcher do you come in? Is it okay? The the stuff is working early, so I don't have to go to everything right off the bat. Yeah, and that makes it. That's how you see pitchers do well and keep hitters off balance throughout the entire game. You know, you're able to stick with your game plan, but things look a little bit different in the fifth or sixth when you're able to maybe pull out a pitch you haven't had to use a lot. So, you know, when everything's kind of working, it's it makes it hard for hitters to settle in. Another foul ball there. Shaven. Now, Rodoni just one strikeout on the day, and normally you see her sitting batters down left and right. Yeah, she she has high strikeout numbers, but I will say today, I mean, she is hitting her spots, and that's something yesterday that she had issues with. She was getting her strikeouts at times, at big times sometimes when she needed them, but she was also missing spots, and we would see big base hits, extra base hits, home runs go up on the board. Um, today, we're not seeing the strikeout numbers, but I'll take the trade off. Let your defense work and hit those spots and let these hitters get themselves out. As a pitcher, are you uh, loving this kind of matchup here? I do, I like it. I mean, I always really enjoy watching Rodoni throw. She is just so deliberate with what she does and nothing phases her. And then you see Charles for Iowa State, I mean, working out of some tough jams, throwing some really great pitches. And Charles, it's kind of interesting because she is not a strikeout pitcher, has strikeouts today that we don't want to see. Throw over to first, not in time. Shaven reaches with one out. Good job by Benford keeping that ball on the infield. That's a long throw in that five, six hole. Yeah, it, it looked like it might have was going to maybe get through there mm -hmm. and then she knocks it down and did everything she can thrown from the knees making it as close as she possibly could so here is ramos the nine hole hitter take strike one
So if you're a hitter, how do you adjust to what these pitchers are doing? You know, I think if you're Iowa State, I mean, Radoni, she really is starting to go to that rise ball. We're starting to see her work up in the zone. Um, if Iowa State can zone down, anything that is belt and above, you are saying, we're going to take it. Even if it doesn't break out of the zone, we're going to take it. And she hit her right in the elbow. I think the umpire called that a foul ball. Okay. Hit off the bottom of the bat. Mm -hmm. And I will say, if, if with Radoni's velocity, if that hit Ramos in the elbow and she just kind of stood there, <laughs> the tough cookie, right? uh, she is. Here's another look at it. Yeah. I think it caught right there at yeah, the knob of the right bat. Right at the bottom. Yeah, just right off the knob. Yeah, if you're Iowa State, you have, you've got to zone down. Take the rise ball away. Grounder. Nope, oh, called it a foul ball there. They called her out there, two outs. Huge out there by Radoni getting Ramos as you're moving back into the top of this Iowa State lineup because the last person you're going to want to face with runners <laughs> in scoring position is standing on deck. As Shaven moves over to second, we go back up to the top of the lineup. Carly Spellhog. Iowa State, that pitch right there is the pitch you're going to want to hit. The fastball on the inner half in the zone, that's the pitch that Iowa State is going to have to start unloading on if they're going to want to put runs on this board. 0-2 here. Spellhog. And is she is going to find some grass in center field and Pinkerton going to send home Shaven and the throw over to second, not in time. What a nice piece of hitting there from Spellhog. The RBI double. Spellhog coming up clutch. I will say, with the throw home, Shaben, this was, she was going to score. You could see it. It's really unfortunate here that Baylor did not have a cut to cut that ball and keep Shaben at first base because now you've got Sammy Williams coming up. Now you do have an extra base open, but you've got Sammy Williams coming up with a runner with the go-ahead run on second base. And Glenn Moore out to uh, chat with the ump. Yeah, it's exactly what you said you don't want to do is uh, leave a runner in scoring position for Sammy Williams. We saw the intentional walk earlier. We might see it again. I know Glenn Moore is upset about that call at second base. He thought that Spell hog was out. It's hard to tell. That our replay looks like she may have gotten her on the back. Oh, we are all tied up at one. We've got a game here. It's Carly Spell hog. Comes up big with two outs to tie this thing up at one. It's not very often you see Coach Glenn Moore get, get fired up, and he's a little bit fired up about that call. I think some of that goes back to he knows what's riding on this game today, and it very well could be a spot in the NCAA tournament. Here comes Sammy Williams. You mentioned it last time up. They intentionally walked her. And Jamie Pinkerton's having a conversation. So two out spell hog, and they are going to uh, walk her again. And you can tell there's some uh, Iowa State fans there that do not like that. They're, they're not happy. I mean, you also think about two. 
Sammy Williams. This is, she's one hit away from setting right. the Big 12 record. It'd be awesome to do it here in the Big 12 championship. But in the same token, Baylor, they've got to play the game. And, and I'll go back to it again. You can't let the best hitter in the lineup beat you. Make someone else do it. If that's what happens, it happens. But I understand the call. Unfortunate for Sammy Williams because she hasn't really gotten to swing the bat today. Well, look, she's fired up trotting down to first base. Yep. So, you know, that's a team player there. She's uh, fire, firing up Ramos here is uh, two runners on, two outs. And Ramos in the same situation earlier in the game. Came up a little bit short with the pop up to the first baseman. Things just got very interesting, DJ. <laughs> this is... This is postseason softball. Yes. Kayla Ramos with the grounder up the middle and not gonna be able to make a play. Sliding into home to give Iowa State the lead is Spellhog. 2-1, Cyclones take the lead. Michaela Ramos. Using the dirt and finding a way to get it done. As soon as I saw that high hop, I'm going, this is going to be trouble. Great job keeping the ball in the infield. But again, heads up base running by Iowa State. You can see Coach Pinkerton sending spell hog the whole time. He's going, go, 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 go. As soon as you see that. And uh, that pitch, the wild is uh, runner's going to advance to second and third. And this is where Redoni just needs to settle down. She's throwing a good game. Again, Iowa State's put two runs on the board here in the fifth, but two runs on the board. One of them just came from a ground ball. So getting back to what she's been doing all game. Here is Ochoa back up for the Cyclones. Outside there, ball two. You can um, tell it's getting kind of intense for both teams. And I keep going back to, I mean, Baylor took two of three from Iowa State back in conference play. They're both sitting very similarly with where their RPI ranking is at 34 and 38. The winner of this game, if it comes down to, they're only going to take one of them. The winner of this game might be the one that gets in. Right. And a foul tip there. So Choa stays alive. Two and two count, two outs. Runners on second and third. Outside full count. Big pitch here for Radoni. Full count, two outs. Runners are going to be on the move with the pitch. So anything that gets past the infield, you can expect to see Ramos scoring. And she walked her. Bases loaded now for Iowa State. Gosey back up. Kaylee Gosey. The freshman. In a big situation here. Strike one. There are a couple, couple fans unhappy with the strike zone. <laughs> That looked like the same spot to me. A little, a little elevated, but yeah, I mean, if the pitch before that's a strike, that one is definitely questionable. We got the rally hats going still. I like it. 
been a two-out rally here for the Cyclones as they take in the lead. The ground ball to third. A defensive play to prevent Iowa State from putting any more on the board. That is another big defensive play for Baylor here, but Iowa State going to get on the board thanks to Carly Spellhog. 2-1 Cyclones taking the lead as we head to the bottom of the fifth. You're watching the Phillips 66 Big 12 Softball Championship here on ESPN+. Plus. We'll make this simple. It's time to go and get rewarded for it. The MyPhillips 66 app saves you up to 25 cents per gallon of gas. That's right, up to... And to the bottom of the fifth as Iowa State put two runs on the board there in the top of the fifth. Baylor looking to respond here. Carly Charles has been pitching very well. Four strikeouts. Just two hits for Baylor. And Charles has been very solid so far in this game. Gave up the run early, but she has been, we've kind of seen her settle down. And again, I kind of think the thing that is interesting is she hasn't struck out a ton of batters this season. And we've seen four strikeouts in this game. And we haven't seen a lot of hard hit balls. You know, all of her outs have been kind of cheesy ground balls or weekly hit fly balls. Another pop up out there to center field. It's go see. Really go see. It's out number one for Iowa State. And right as I'm saying that, Kyosos, even though it was an out, it was one of the hardest hit balls we've actually seen off of Charles today, other than the robbed home run by Benford. But I mean, that's one of the hardest hit outs I think we've seen all day. Here's Alyssa Valos for one. Just outside for ball one. What's been working so well pitch wise for um, Carly Charles here throughout this game? She's keeping the ball down. I mean, she's really working at the knee. Even that miss there, I thought that was a good pitch and got called a ball, but it was a quality miss. And she's really been working at the knees on both sides of the plate. She's changed speeds when she's needed to, but. Charles doesn't have the velocity to work up in the zone too much. If she gets too high in the zone, that's when she starts to get hit a little bit harder. So she's done a very good job of keeping the ball low, working the knees. Two-one count here. Alyssa Valos limited nine starts, but Glenn Moore calling her and calling on her in this big time game. Yeah, and she's she stepped up. She made a big play in a big time situation out in center field earlier today. Um, you know, when you get this deep in the season, and you know maybe you have people struggling at the plate, you start looking. Okay, if I've got someone who's been starting in center field who's struggling a little bit, maybe I want to put my better defensive player out there. Pop up to Williams there for out number two. And back to the top of the lineup. Now for the Bears, the number nine, Lou, Gilbert. Lou Gilbert. Ball one. Gilbert a strikeout victim back in the third. But has scored the only run of the game so far. So big out here for Carly Charles. And now outside again. 2 0 count here for Gilbert.
And pop up out to Nichua. We're out number three. Another quick one, two, three inning for Carly Charles. It's to Baylor and Iowa State. Here's a look at the scoring recap. Emily Hott got things going for Baylor in the bottom of the first one nothing as the Bears took the early lead and it would remain that way until the top of the fifth when Iowa State gets it going thanks to Carly Spellhog with the RBI single to score Logan Shabon and then Michaela Ramos that RBI single to score Spellhog to give Iowa State the lead here 2-1 in the fifth and then one, two, three innings. So now we head to the sixth and that's where we are. Two, one, Iowa State. With Alicia Ranchez up for the Cyclones. Big inning here for Baylor. Iowa State getting the two runs back in the fifth then getting those three quick outs putting Radoni back out here pretty quickly. So this is a big inning. Keep this game in striking distance and give Baylor here a chance going into the bottom of the sixth. Swing and a miss, strike three for out number one. As Radoni sits down at Ranchez. Radoni again bringing that change up into the game here late and it just falls off the table. Again, Radoni has one of the best off speed pitches in the country. And there's a great look at it right there. Here is a Casey Simpson. So it was strikeout number two for Radoni. See Simpson over two on the day. Ball one. You know, we've been talking a lot about the pitching that we've seen from Rodoni and Charles today, but talk about some great defense that we have seen from both of these teams that have really, you know, I walked into this game thinking we would see a higher scoring game. And we're 2-1, top of the sixth. And we've seen some tremendous defense that I think has kept this game low scoring today. Yeah, a lot of those um, balls that were hit for both these teams were hits or plays. Yeah. Strike number three, throw to first. So back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Radoni. Now batting for the Cyclones, third baseman number six. Same sort of setup again for Radoni. Speeding up Simpson and then slowing her down with the changeup in the dirt. So back up to the plate here is Logan Shaven. Scored the game tying run there in the fifth inning. Shaven's two for two today. Yeah, I was just gonna say she has had a big day today so far. Two outs. Hey, Iowa State got a rally going with two outs there in the fifth. Those are the best rallies, aren't they? Yeah. You know, you think you're kind of getting out of the inning, and then here comes Iowa State putting two runs on the board with two outs. 1-1 one, one count here to Shaven. Pop up towards the backstop. But this is a senior. You talk about her having a big day, you know. Never know what's going to happen next, and you want to put it all, out all on the line if you're a senior in this type of situation. No question. I mean, Iowa State, I think they're they're feeling the pressure of, are we going to make it to the NCAA tournament or not? And again, depending on how some of these other conference champions shake out, I think that we could see only one of these two teams make it in. We could see both. I think both make a, make a good claim for being deserving. Um, but we may only see one. So Shaven has been awesome today and being on base here again with the walk, all she's doing is rolling this lineup back over to the top where you've got Spellhog and Williams and Ramos back to back to back. I believe we're going to have a conference here between the umpires. 
What is this about, do you think? I'm going to be honest. I'm not completely sure. Um, we could have had a potential. Oh, it hit her right there on, on the, the foot. Toe, so I yeah. think Baylor was going, did that hit her or not? And caught her right there on the foot. So here is Skyler Ramos, the nine hole hitter for the Cyclones. Foul ball. Oh, for one here today. But you know, the good news for those Cyclone fans that were booing the intentional walks is uh, after this, we go back to the top of the lineup. So we're gonna get another chance to see Sammy Williams. Yep, and this could get interesting here with two outs. If we see Williams in this inning, they're not gonna have a place to put her. And unless we see some extra base hits. So this could get interesting, or we're gonna see Sammy Williams early early in the inning, and you're probably not going to see a walk. And a grounder to second for out number three. And it's hot with another play for Baylor to get out of this inning. 2-1. Tornado sirens just a Saturday noon reoccurrence here in Oklahoma. There's not actually a tornado. We just do the practice every Saturday. So we head to the bottom of the sixth here in Oklahoma City. 2-1, Iowa State leading Baylor. Here's Leader Emily Hot back up for the Bears. And DJ, we got a game on the other field. 5-1, Texas Tech leading it. Texas. They came into Oklahoma City on a mission. They did, and I tell you what, they barely made it into this Big 12 championship. So Texas Tech has come on strong. That is definitely a score I think people are surprised by. Strike one here to Hot. That's a long siren. I feel like that's a little bit longer than the ones that happen here in Norman. Pop up out to left. Big out there for Charles. Because this is I'm going here in the sixth, going two, three, four through the heart of this Baylor lineup. This is a huge, huge, huge inning here for Iowa State and Carly Charles. That is a long siren. It's still right? going. It's still going. It's always interesting to see non Oklahomans at noon on a Saturday when those sirens go off looking around. Right. And, you know, we, and Charles did get the start in the game in the series that would happened earlier in the um, regular season. But she just went four innings. So, you know, she's going a lot longer against these Baylor hitters than she did um, the first time she faced them. She has, she's kept them off balance. I mean, she has looked good, working quickly. And again, short of the run that scored in the first inning, that run came, that run came from a leadoff walk. You know, you take that walk out of the mix, Baylor really hasn't done a lot to string some things together. It's two hits. Four strikeouts. Ball two. Goose McLean for the Bears. 0 for 1 here today. It's ball three. Big pitch here for Charles, a walk to McGlon, one out with Benford behind who, who was inches away from hitting a home run in her last at bat. This is a big pitch. We don't want to give any free passes here. And full count there, she fouls it back, but this is a hitter that's capable of doing some damage with the bat. No question, and you know, you see that 3-1 count in a run one, one run ball game to Goose McLaughlin, that's not a good feeling. <laughs> you know, you're going, you better make a pitch. Same thing here. Charles needs to make a pitch here to Goose McLaughlin. 
Grounder to Williams. Over to first for out number one. Out number two, sorry about that. And that was big time. Again, Goose McGlon, very capable of making this a tie game with one swing of the bat. And Carly Charles coming up big, working her way back into that count and being able to get Goose McGlon to ground out on the inside pitch. So back up for the Bears is Leah Benford. Short stop. And I'm being a little careful here if I'm Iowa State. I mean, Benford is a big power hitter. She has the capability. We saw it back in the fourth. She's been a little quiet this weekend so far, but she has the capability to leave the yard. Yeah, back on April 30th, she actually had back-to-back -back home runs against Kansas. But pops that one up to first, and there is Spellhog for out number three. So one, two, three again goes Carly Charles, and we head to the seventh inning. 2-1 Iowa State leading at Baylor, and they'll head back to the plate. You're watching the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship to the seventh inning we go, and we have still got a great ball game here between Iowa State and Baylor as the Cyclones lead the Bears 2-1 to one and over on the other field for the third place game. Texas Tech leading Texas 5-1 to one, and then we'll have Bedlam, another showdown between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State for the Big 12 Championship. Back to the top of the lineup for the Cyclones. Carly Spellhog up, lead off. Oops, this one foul and out of play. Two quick strikes here. And Spellhog had a huge RBI back in the fifth to tie this game up and then eventually came around to score the go-ahead run. So Spellhog has been a little bit of a thorn in Baylor's side today. And what does she need to do to make sure that uh, Baylor has to pitch to Sammy Williams? <laughs> I tell you what, um, I don't know how I feel about if if Spellhog gets on base here with a single. I don't know how I feel about moving another run into scoring position. So this out is important. If Baylor wants to put Sammy Williams on, I really think that they, they're going to need to do it in this situation with nobody else on base. But I'd be curious. I mean, Radoni, she's a senior pitcher. They may throw to her. I, I, this is, this ought to get interesting. Grounder over to Ellis, over to first in time. Route number one. So if they were going to put her on, I think this is the only opportunity, having no one on with one out, that they could. So here comes Sammy Williams, 0 for 1, last two at bat. She's been intentionally walked. And they're going to throw to her. And you heard the cheers. Yep. And I like it. Challenge. I mean, the senior versus the senior. Challenge him. And I don't think you pitch not to lose or to not give up a home run. You've got a pitch to go after the best hitter in the lineup when you have the opportunity to. I agree with the with the intentional walk earlier in the game. Don't let her beat you. But here, I love it. And drops down. And Pinkerton's waving her to second. So to second base goes Sammy Williams. And there is a new name at the top of the Big 12 record books with this double here from Sammy Williams as she becomes the all-time hits leader for the Big 12 Conference. Drops right down out there in right field. Another double, but she's also the Big 12 leader in career doubles as well. What an amazing career for Sammy Williams. You gotta love breaking the record set by Narelle Dixon. Former teammate of yours. She was, and Narelle was one heck of a ball player all the way around. But I, I will tell you, she and Sammy Williams are two very different types of hitters. You know, Narelle 
um, at the time was one of the fastest players, if not the fastest, in the country. She could do a little bit of it all. She could slap, she could hit for power, she could hit gap to gap, she could do a little bit of it all. And Sammy Williams, don't see a lot of that slapping coming from her. Great day, great way to finish out this Big 12 championship for Sammy Williams. And you think about some of the hitters that have come through the Big 12 conference, that's a record that has stood since 2007. It has, and I'll tell you what, the fact that it has stood this long with some of the players that have come through the Big 12 just shows you how massive of a number that is that was set up by Narell Dixon. And again, for Sammy Williams to break it here today is, is pretty impressive. 329 career hits to move to the top of the Big 12 record book. Sammy Williams, every game, Another record shattered for Sammy Williams between Big 12 and Iowa State program records and then NCAA. Her name is just all over the record books and all kinds of hitting statistics. As it should be. And, you know, you talk to Coach Pinkerton about Sammy Williams and you can talk all day long about what she has done offensively and what she has done just as a ball player for this program. But her leadership and everything that she has brought to this program to put Iowa State back in the position to be going to the NCAA tournament is gonna stay on this program for a long time. And a shot from Ramos, gonna roll out to the fence and Pinkerton sending Williams home. And Iowa State adds another run on the board, 3-1 taking the lead. An RBI double from Ramos that scores Williams. That is a huge run for Iowa State. And tell you what, when Rodoni has given up big hits, extra base hits, it has been pitches that have missed up in the zone. She has a tremendous rise ball, and we just saw this pitch not quite have that break. And Ramos with the pitch up and away, just going with it. She has had a huge day today. And of these three runs, two of them have come at the hands of Michaela Ramos. So two RBIs for Michaela Ramos. She now has 54 RBIs to Ty Williams, <laughs> who just broke that record, that single season record last night against Oklahoma State for the Iowa State single season record for RBIs in a season. How awesome is that? I mean, it's not very often that you have multiple players in the same lineup who are just breaking school records like that. And, you know, it's going to be interesting, too, as the season hopefully goes on for Iowa State. What is, who's actually gonna be the RBI leader? Is it gonna be Sammy Williams or Michaela Ramos? So 3-1 lead here for Iowa State. We were talking about it. We didn't know if uh, Sammy Williams was gonna get a chance and she did and it opened up another run to be scored for the Cyclones. So. And I'm glad that Baylor threw to her. They could have walked her. I'm glad they didn't. Um, not because of the record or anything that's you know going on, but you have nobody on, one out, a pitcher like Radoni. Again, bow up and, and face the challenge. And Sammy Williams won that challenge. Choa for two on the day. One of the two strikeouts from Gia Radoni. Three strikeouts. Matter to Benford. She make the play at first. Oh. Gonna call her out over there. You uh, you thought that was pretty close. I did, and I might be I might be wrong um, from my vantage point, but good job by Benford. She's been solid over there today. You know, she she looked over at second to check the runner, and then mm -hmm. threw over and. Yeah, that play took a little longer. Here's another look at it. And I think they got her barely. It was close. Choa is fast. Yes, she is. She was moving. Here is Gosi. Haley Gosi back up for the Cyclones with two outs. Go for three here today. Yeah. 
2-1 count now. Radoni wanted that call. That's a good spot on the outside corner. We haven't seen that call much today for either side. It's it's been pretty consistent that it's that it's a ball. Lined out to right field out there to the Bauer for out number three. And to the bottom of the seventh we go, but Iowa State adds another run here in the top of the seventh. Sammy Williams becomes the all-time leader for career hits in the Big 12 Conference. Giving a wave to the fans there. Such a great feeling, what a hitter. And then Michaela Ramos gonna score her here on the RBI double. So three to get back in it. They need two, tie it up. And it will be Taylor Ellis to lead things off. Swing and miss for strike one. Taylor Ellis was trying to chip away at that lead with that swing right there. Senior. Talked about it all throughout this game. Do not know, we thought Baylor had a good chance as Ellis sends this out to center. Gosi there to make the play for out one. Thought Baylor had done enough to get in, but then uh, Glenn Moore saying yesterday, not so sure. Yeah, feel like they need to win this game here today to lock it in. I think I think Glenn Moore's right. I really do. I mean, if we're if we're comparing apples to apples here, I mean Iowa State has a better record. Um, they are ahead of them, not by much, but only by a couple in the RPI. They're going to end the season if Iowa State's able to hold on to this lead right here. They're going to end the season two and two, head to head. And Baylor walking away from the Big 12 championship if they are unable to get a rally going here with the last two outs, 0-3. Oh so 1-0 count. Here to Bauer. To see Bauer 0 for 2. Ground out and fly out. Baylor down to their final two outs. We were talking about it between innings. For Carly Charles, going to the seventh inning, looking for a complete game here, would only be her sixth of the season. Yeah, she has not gone the distance too much um, this season. And I mean, she has, she has come out big for Iowa State today. And to be able to finish this game, again, I'm not counting Baylor out by any means. They have come back strong in the seventh inning, even so far in this championship, and has just come up, have come up a little bit short. So Carly Charles has been big time so far in this game. Rounder to Williams. Over to Spellhog for out number two. So Baylor down to their final out. And it will be down to Zadie LaValle. Freshman catcher from Oklahoma, her home state. Right up the road from this stadium. Hit it, Carl Albert. Huge, huge, huge at bat for LaValle to try to keep this game going. And she will not. How fitting is that? Line drive to Sammy Williams at shortstop to end this game. 3-1 as Iowa State will claim fifth place in the Big 12 Phillips 66 Softball Championship. And a huge win. You talked about the pressure for Iowa State to bounce back after a heartbreaking loss to Oklahoma State last night and come back and win this game. How big is this? This is huge, and I, I really truly believe that this just solidified Iowa State's place in the NCAA tournament. And everyone will find out tomorrow, but Iowa State, they walked away yesterday with two losses. 
but they played two very hard-fought games, got rewarded for it here today against a good Baylor team. And I mean, they were pretty dominant on all sides of the ball today. So a lot of times in these games, Iowa State, the player of the game will always be Sammy Williams, right? Best sitter in Iowa State history. Not today, we're giving it to the pitcher, DJ. How about Carly Charles? Goes the distance, seven innings, just two hits, gives up the first run in the first, but shuts Baylor down the rest of the way. She was huge, and you know, you talk about Carly Charles getting the nod here today, and she was absolutely lights out, giving up one run in the first, and she really settled down, and Baylor just couldn't figure her out today. She came up clutch for Iowa State. Carly Charles, the Phillips 66 player of the game. So Iowa State knocks off Baylor. Three to one, go one and two after going 0 and two yesterday in some hard fought games. They bounce back in a big way to take it three to one over Baylor heading into the postseason, getting some momentum and Sammy Williams becomes the Big 12 record holder for career hits. And three to one again, your final score for DJ Sanchez. I'm Jessica Cooper.